Hi folks, so the questions we have in front of us here today guys are the 2019 Section A higher level uh, the core questions from the Section A paper okay uh, four questions you have to do three but for the purpose of this video we're going to go through each one individually okay uh, so starting off guys we're going to start off here with question A1 and then move on to A2, A3 and A4 to finish it out okay so I'm just going to quickly scan up there now to A1 okay Right, so for question A1, it says the image shows a multi-story building in Chicago. The front of the structure is comprised of a series of glass panels and then the drawing shows the projections of three similar glass surfaces ABC, BCD and CDP. So obviously we can see the kind of the multi-story building here and we can see obviously it's made of varying uh, glass panels are obviously all kind of meeting each other at different angles and so forth. Uh, part A, it says determine the dihedral angle between surfaces ABC and BCD and then part B, draw the elevation and plan of a horizontal line on the surface CDP which shall pass through the point P determine and indicate in degrees the inclination of this to the vertical plane ok, uh, right, so starting off with part A this is a thing that I love to show at you all the time here on the dihedral angle, it seems to come up uh, every year in the exam paper in some form, okay, in some question. Um, so it says here, determine the dihedral angle between the surfaces ABC and BCD. Uh, so looking here, we have ABC and then we have BCD, and likewise here in our plan view. So what we actually have to do here is we have to um, get the angle in between these kind of surfaces. So if you think of it, it's kind of like if you put your two set squares together and you join them. Um, the, where they joined would give you an edge, okay? So we can see the surfaces here, ABC and BCD. The common line between them is the line BC, okay, in both views. So that's kind of our line there. And if you look in along that, uh, once we see it as a true length force, you'll be able to get the angle between the surfaces, which is known as the dihedral angle. So what we're actually going to have to do, first of all, is we're going to have to get the true length of the line BC. So to get the true length of the line, what we're going to do is we're going to look perpendicular to that line, Okay, and set up an x1, y1. So that's what we're going to start off with. So starting off there, hit a slide and set squares parallel to the line BC. I'm going to set up an x1, y1. And having set up that parallel to the line x1, y1, or sorry, parallel to the, the line of intersection between the two of them, which is BC. I'm going to rotate out perpendicular, or project out perpendicular, sorry. So from C, to find C1, go out here, to find B1, to find A1, and finally to find D1. Go out there somewhere as well. Okay. So what I need to do now is locate those points in my plan view, or sorry, in my auxiliary view. So to locate those points, I need the perpendicular distances for them. So just to be able to get them accurately, I'm just going to mark up the heights here using my T-square. Just be able to get the exact heights that I need. So for the height of C, I can see it's quite small there. I'm actually going to measure that one. And that's coming in at, just looking there, of four millimeters, just slightly above four millimeters. So for C, I'm going to mark that distance out. It's probably better to take it with your compass, but just because I'm using slightly my compass with a pen, it's a little bit more difficult. So there is C1. Now to locate the rest of the points A, B, and D, I'm now going to use my compass. So for A. Take the distance there, find A in my plan, out to my X1, Y1, mark it out. That will give me A1, likewise with B. Usually scribe a little arc just to make sure I'm exactly on it. Find B1, and finally the last one, the height from the XY line up. to D, where D is, check that out as well. And as you can see, I just need to extend out my line there a little bit further. So, so there we have it. 
that is A1 I've got B1 here and then finally D1 now I know that the line B1 to C1 that there is a true length now I'm just going to complete those surfaces ABC or in this case what's known as A1 B1 C1 because I've done an auxiliary view which is called X1 Y1 So there we have the surfaces A1, B1, C1, and then B1, C1, D1, okay? But what's important to note is that here we have the line B1 to C is now a true length. So we have the true length of this line got. Now what we're going to do is, if you imagine you were standing here looking in along the surface, of, or sorry, along the line, so that we see it as a point view, because we see it as a point view, therefore then we will see the surfaces A1, B1, C1, and B1, C1, D1 as edge views, therefore giving us the angle between them. So, to do that, once again, just going to project another view, an auxiliary view. Once again, this time perpendicular to my line of intersection between the two of them. Just make sure I'm on it, yep. Obviously, now you will be using pencils when you're doing this, it's just for to make them show up a little bit clearer so that's called an x2 y2 and having projected that out perpendicular just make sure I'm still bang on it there I'm gonna have to that. now I'm going to project out so there we go and that will be d I probably need to go a little bit further that one and likewise with d1 and c1 and likewise with A1. So A doesn't need to go that far. So same method, only this time you measure from the previous XY line back. In this case, the previous XY line was our X1, Y1. So we're going to start off with C. That distance right there. Come down to C. And what you'll actually find is that that distance should be the same for B we can see it is. So therefore we have the point view of C1, B1. Now I'm going to take the distance, you can see here I can mark this way to my X1, Y1 as well. Take that distance there and then that was for D, come down to our D here, mark that out and the last one then, and as you can see it's a little bit awkward with my set square, so I'm just going to mark it now with my distance here so once again my distance there is exactly four millimeters so for A I'm going to mark out exactly four millimeters to find A2 in this case so there we have it and at that point right there I have now found A2 I have found B2 comma C2 and finally D2 and what's important to note is that that there is a point view of the line BC. Okay, and to finish off part A, connect A2, B2, C2, which we know is a plane, but we're seeing it now as a line or as what's known as an edge view, and likewise B2, C2, D2, once again another plane, but we see it as an edge view, and the angle in there usually signified by something like that, is the dihedral angle. Okay, so there is our dihedral angle and you could measure it then if you had a protractor and you could measure it whatever angle that is. Okay, so that's the part A done there guys. Um, often comes up in some aspect uh, in the paper, be it in section A, B or C. Uh, part B, it says, draw the elevation and plan of a horizontal line on the surface CDP, which shall pass through the point P, determine and indicate in degrees the inclination of this to the vertical plane. Okay, so in relation to this, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a horizontal line from P, okay? So a horizontal line from P that on the surface CDP, which passed through the point P, okay, or an indicating, okay, perfect. So from P, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a horizontal line across on the surface CDP. 
and that line there is a horizontal line it is parallel with the XY line therefore where it cuts here on the line DC I can now locate that in my plan okay so I'm going to connect that line up I'll actually put it in heavy instead rather than light put that in heavier <clears throat> likewise I'm going to do the exact same down here okay that technically is a true length but all they've asked us okay and this isn't actually that hard it's just understanding what we're doing here it says determine and indicate in degrees the inclination of this to the vertical plane now we need to know what the vertical plane is in this view here okay we see the elevation and the images of those planes are projected onto the vertical plane in this view down here the image of those planes whatever they are ABC BCD and CDP are projected onto the horizontal plane so the angle that we can actually see an inclination in inclination in relation to the vertical plane and the view you see that angle in your plan view so if I was to extend this on okay that's my line if I was to extend that on ever so lightly there the angle inside in here that angle there which having checked the final result would work out to be 26 degrees so that angle in there is the angle the line makes the horizontal line passing through P in relation in respect or in relation to the vertical plane so that line there which is a true length that is the angle it makes in relation to the vertical plane so draw the elevation plan of a horizontal line which shall pass through point P determine indicating degrees the inclination of this to the vertical plane in our plan view we see the vertical plane as the XY line okay which is essentially a surface the vertical plane standing upright and that's the angle it makes against it okay so not too hard to do but I suppose your understanding of it is what's most important there okay so that's A1 done guys what we're going to do now is I'm going to zoom in now to the bottom of the page A2 right so for A2 it says the image below shows the AOL building in Dublin the curve is a hyperbola so we can see it here the AOL and we've got a curve here that is a hyperbola curve the drawing on the right shows the axis AA1 okay so we can see the axis they've given it to us directrix DD1 so they've given us directrix focus F and eccentricity line E so we've got the focus and we have the line of eccentricity uh, a number of points on the curve are also given so we've got a point here a point here there's always going to be a point here directly above the focus okay um, part A locate the vertex five additional points on the curve and draw the top portion of the parabola then part B draw a circle which shall be tangential to the directrix and also tangential to the hyperbola at point P okay uh, this isn't too hard because they've kind of given us all the information we need uh, and as you can see they've actually even shown you the method here for locating the points so from here here and here they said we have to locate five so they've already given us one two three extra to start with so I'm going to now check this down and I assume we only have to draw the top portion of the curve so I'll be three more I'll find it also asks me to locate the vertex the vertex is found by going 45 degrees from the focus to hit the line of eccentricity where it hits the line of eccentricity drop it down make sure I'm accurate there and where it hits the axis there's our vertex which technically is another point on it that's four and I want to find one more so to find my one last one I'll actually do that in a second before I do that I'm going to locate I've located one which is a vertex I'm going to put my point compass point on the focus and where it hits the focal line right here I'm going to swing an arc like that once again, see an arc that gives me my second point. See an arc, and as you can see, likewise with the ones up here, where the arc cuts these lines going down, that helps us to locate points on our curve. So I found one, two, three. These ones are given to us. Four. I need to find one more, probably just to be able to complete it fully inside here. So to do that, I'm going to have to project up another line to my line of eccentricity. I'm going to put it right in right around here, I think, the loop. So where it cuts the line of eccentricity, project it across to my focal line. 
right there and once again using my compass on this time instead of projecting or ro rotating my arc to the left on this time I'm going to rotate my arc to the right just like that and there I have another point found so you can see here I found one two three four five so at this point now I'm happy I can draw on my hyperbolic curve or my hyperbola so putting that in lightly first as neatly and as accurate as I possibly can then Okay, so there you have it. There is the hyperbola. So that's part A. Locate the vertex, which we did, and five additional points to do your hyperbola. Part B. Draw a circle, which shall be tangential to the directrix. Okay. And also tangential to the hyperbola at point P. Okay. This isn't too hard. Um, essentially, I need a circle. They haven't given us any radius, but I need a circle that's going to basically squeeze in here. It's like if I was to drop a ball, okay, and it was to slot into the gap, and it was only to be as big as it touching the point P here and this, and the directrix. So, uh, the best way to actually do that is it's obviously going to be right in the middle, okay, between this, the line of eccentricity, and the directrix. So I can actually bisect my angle there. So bisect your angle and somewhere along that bisected angle is going to be somewhere along that bisected angle is going to be the center of the circle that is tangential to the directrix and the uh, point P on the hyper hyperbolic curve so what I'm actually going to do now is from P that's like a tangent line. I'm going to project out perpendicular to the line of eccentricity from P. So that angle in there, and put it in a different color here actually, sorry. That angle there is perpendicular, and where it cuts through my bisected angle actually gives me the center point of a circle that fits inside there. Okay, so that's uh, that little bit. Now it's just simply a case of actually drawing it in. So to be able to draw it in, I'll actually just take that over there as well. And once again, any point of contact will be perpendicular. Okay, so I have another point of contact here. And just to be able to draw that in, then simply grab your compass. I am using a pen here, so hopefully this works out first time. Trying to make this as neat as possible. Just check my accuracy first. Tiny bit out. There we go. It's close enough, happy with that. And there we have it. Okay. There is a circle which is tangential to both uh, the, hyper the hyperbola at point P and the directrix here. Okay, and there's our points of contact here and here. So that's the second question done there, guys, on uh, the topic of conics. So we'll move up now to uh, A3 at the top right of the page. Okay, so this question here, guys, um, we actually have basically solids intersecting solids, okay? So it's kind of like interpenetration. So the question itself says, A3, the image below shows a building which is based on a series of intersecting prisms. Uh, the drawing shows the incomplete elevation and plan of a similar structure where two prisms penetrate each other. So you can see here, we're gonna have this um, triangular prism here intersecting this kind of cut one here, okay? Um, 
in the drawing a triangular prism intersects an irregular pentagonal prism so it's an irregular pentagonal prism which has been cut as shown the reason it's irregular you can see is because not all the sides are the same length uh, part a complete the elevation and plan showing all lines of interpenetration and part b determine the true shape of the triangle abc okay uh, so part a there this isn't too bad this is just uh, understanding orthographic projection and a little bit on surfaces I think is that straight yeah okay um, so it's going to start off with this face here okay so you see this face here this uh, irregular pentagonal prism um, this face here we can actually see it down here in our plan view as an edge view okay which means we're seeing it as a line so for the top point C right here I don't know exactly where that finishes on the face but I can see where it finishes in my plan so to find where it finishes in elevation it's very easy project it up likewise with A which is on the bottom and likewise with B ok so everyone then then I'm going to project over A and B and I know C comes over as well so that's just this bit here so to be able to locate them I can heavy in that because I'm looking in this direction at it in the direction of my pen I can also heavy in this and then this edge back here is behind it so that'll actually go in as hidden detail to there and finally then heavy in this bit okay so that bit there is probably the easiest part of it uh, now the next part is locating where it's kind of hitting the surface here and what you to take note of here is um, it's obviously been cut at a little bit of an angle but that angle might appear straight but it's not you can see there's kind of a little kink just in here a little bit of a kink there so um, where the bottom of the triangular prism cuts through and then the top cut through they're actually on different surfaces okay so where the top cuts through that's probably the easiest one to locate we can see that what we actually have here is an edge view this surface here if I was to call this point 1, 2 and 3 then that would be 1 and 2 and 3 would be here so that's an edge view so I can actually find the top one quite easily that's down here and it's just a case then of projecting that across to there so that's how far that comes in right there sorry a little bit out of the see here and um, now what I have to find is it's going to cut I'm just thinking there I'll actually be able to find the bottom ones as well because that's a separate surface here so this surface here just kind of what appears to be rectangular okay it is rectangular it's just as we're looking down on it I can actually find the cut points of where they enter that surface and they will enter that surface here and let's move that out of the way there here so they'll actually enter there and there and somewhere up here it's actually going to meet somewhere up here these will not just connect straight down there if you did that that is technically incorrect because it's actually going to meet at a slightly different angle okay so it's going to maybe jut out here and then come down like that and how you're actually going to do that is we actually have this line here we see it as a point so what I could do is if I treat that point where because that's a, a cut point I'm actually putting in here what's known as a horizontal cutting plane so I'm horizontally cutting across from that point to where it's going to hit over here on this face where it hits on that face I can locate two points in my plan which will be a point here and a point here so it's like I sliced the top of this triangular prism off and then if I project that back this guy back as well and then connect this line down that will actually locate those two points for me there and there so now I can actually heavy it in so there we go there we go and finally down to here as well so you can see it might appear straight but it's not exactly so as you can see there it's not 100% straight okay and at this point now maybe this bit maybe this bit and that's where it actually enters the surface so a bit of hidden detail here
and is it going to enter? I'm just thinking. Comes up here, here, here. Just need to finish off them as well. Just making sure there's nothing, no. So that will go ahead there and there. And there you have it. That actually is where it enters the surface completely. Okay. So that's part A done. Complete all the elevation, uh, showing all lines of interpenetration. Elevation and plan showing all lines of interpenetration. And now it says part B determine the true shape of the triangle ABC. Okay. So a couple of ways you could go about this. Um, based on the space that they've left us, you could actually go about it two ways. Uh, the first way, and it's probably the easiest way, is and the least messy. Uh, I'm going to treat okay the triangle ABC. We have it as an edge view here. So if we were batted it, okay, rebattened means basically I've rotated it. And if I treat A as kind of like a hinge point, okay, because I already have the heights in my elevation. So if I was to treat A as kind of like the hinge point, and I was to rotate point B all the way around. And as I said, A is like the hinge, so it's like the hinge of a door. If you imagine you're looking down to plan view of a door here. Okay. And now what I've done is point C on the door has rotated around, okay, until it's in this position, likewise with point B. And where they have rotated around into those positions, it's like the door was open in this position, it's closed now. In the elevation, because we're parallel now with the XY line, I can project up. And C will actually go up to the top. And I can locate, A stays in the same place, but I can locate B. I can locate C. And what I've actually found is, so there's C, there's B. And what I've actually found here is the true shape of the door, A, B, C. And that simply is just by rebatting it around so that we're looking straight at it. Because in our elevation view, you have to remember we're looking straight at it. So all I've done here is I rotated the door from this position, just simply rotate it around. Probably not the best I'm doing there, but in this position, just literally rotate that around point A until it was there, in that position there. Okay? So what we could do is because we're looking in directly at it now, we can see the true shape of it because we're looking straight at it. Okay? So that was probably the easiest way to do that. Uh, another way we could technically have done it is we could have set up an X1, Y1. So we could have looked perpendicular to that face there, A, B, C as an edge view. Uh, could look perpendicular, set up an X1, Y1 parallel to it, and then projected out my points and then taken my heights from the elevation. Absolutely fine there doing that. And you can see we had a little bit of space here, so we probably would have achieved that as well. Okay, but the abatement method is probably the easiest one. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we are going to move down to A4, which is at the bottom of the page. Right, so the last question on this page, guys, it says A4, the drawing on the right shows the plan and partially completed perspective drawing of the end portion of a JA pitch or of a GA pitch. The goalposts are also shown. The position of two vanishing points are given in the perspective drawing. And then it says, part A, complete the perspective drawing of the given portion of the pitch, and then determine and show the true height of the goal posts upright. Okay, part B, go on true height, oh, it's just a bit, yeah, they've given it, oh yeah, working backwards, okay. Sorry, I was just thinking about that there for a sec. Okay, so what they've done here is essentially they've given us this line, they've given us the back edge here, as far as there, but they haven't given us the finishing point here. So this is just normal. They've given us the vanish point, the ground line, the horizon line, everything here, okay, and our pitch plan is all set up for us. So this isn't actually too hard. It's just a case of uh, finding the exact position of our points. So what I always do here now is this point, it's only asking us to go as far as here. So I'm going to locate, I can actually locate that easier by just projecting across because I can see that they're in line with, each, they should be in line with each other. So from this point here, a couple of ways you go about this. Um, I could connect, what I'm actually doing here is putting a line in like that, that's what I'm actually doing here, and to be able to locate this point at the far side, so I could connect that across the VP1, and to find where it exactly finishes, I could extend out this, because I know the sideline is going here, okay, like this, which is going to be parallel with my VP2, so from there, I could extend that out, 
that actually will give me my sideline on the far side. Now, if you want, you could check your accuracy. The way I could have done that was just extend it out, and rather than bringing this across, I could have brought this down to my spectator. I usually stop them at the pitcher plane. David brought it in the full way. I usually stop them just for neatness of drawing. Then, where it hits the purple or the pitcher plane, project it down perpendicular. And depending on my accuracy, hopefully, and we can see that's okay. So it's working out fine. Now what I want to do is I simply want to locate uh, some other points on the drawing. So an important point would be this one, this one, uh, this one here, and this one here. Okay. Uh, so to be able to find those, I'm actually going to bring them down to my spectator. Stop it at the pitch plane once again. Bring it down to my spectator. Stop it at the pitch plane once again. And then project it down perpendicular. So that'll give me a point down there. And likewise with this guy, point down here. And these lines are going in this direction, okay, which is parallel to VP1. So extend them out to VP1. That'll actually help me locate those lines on the pitch. There's a nice question here, actually. Okay, so that's going to give me those two lines on the pitch. Now what I want to do is I want to find these lines here. Um, so the way to find those would simply be a case of, once again, oh, I see they put in a little, oh yes, I can see why they put in the X to help us find that little box there, right? Um, so I'm going to start off with this one here. So to find him, I'm going to project him down to my spectator. And likewise, sorry, using the wrong color there now. And keep them all similar. And same with this guy. Okay. And for the here's my pitch plane. A bit of sliding set squares here once again. So let me come down to here. And likewise, this guy, you come down to here. And because the lines are going in this direction, they'll go to VP2. That can actually help us complete that portion of the question. So there we have that. Now what I want to find is this point right here, which will actually tell me how far that's coming out. Um, so you can actually see it's just a diagonal X joined between opposite corners. So from this corner to this corner. Okay, so right there, I've now found that point there. Okay. And what I can do is that line is going that direction, so VP1. So it's going like that, so you can see it in there now. And what I have to do is find this point and this point. So you can see they've actually brought this one down for me already, which is handy. So right here, I can extend that through VP2. And just to be able to heavy that in. So they're just going to lay the keepers square. And to locate it at the other side, same as always, bring it to your spectator. I usually stop it, as I said, at the pitch plane for neatness of drawing. Then project that down. And where it hits the back line, or the end line, project it through. And there we have the little square. Okay, uh, quite a neat little drawing there. Uh, now, the next part, that's part A done. It says, part uh, B, determine and show the true height of the goalpost upright. Okay, uh, so what we're actually doing here is we're showing height lines, okay? Um, generally, if you were in class and you would have learned about height lines, generally you would have been given a height from an elevation and you would have to use that height by projecting down, say, parallel to one of the vanishing points and then coming down to your ground line and so forth and working the height up. Now we're actually, we're, we already have the, we don't have the elevation, but we do have the height of the goalposts. So we can just work it backwards in this case. So there's a couple of ways you could do it. Um, just based on where the drawing is going and it's going off my sheet. Yeah. So what I'm actually going to do is, for this goalpost right here, 
and I'm going to use yeah I'll use this one here um, just thinking you come parallel yeah. you could use either or doesn't make a difference yeah I'm going to use this guy right here I'm going to go uh, parallel to this vanishing point which is VP2 from our spectator obviously went to VP2 so from that goal post there just make sure he doesn't go too far no that'll be fine so for that goal post right there I'm actually going to put this in in green hopefully this comes up okay so you can see that there it's just gone in green I've gone parallel to this guy here where it hits my pitcher plane I'm going to extend that down to my ground line once again put that in green okay I've extended that down to my ground line and what I'm actually going to do is from VP2 which is the one we went parallel to and from this goal post here which is the one on the left as I see it here okay I'm going to actually vanish through the top of that because it's asking us to determine and show the true height so working backwards I'm going to vanish through the top of that because I have the height there and where that actually cuts through my green line here that actually helps me determine if I had an elevation the true height so I'm just going to put in a little h there and that little height there to really checking your understanding of it is working out to be 18 so maybe I don't know it might be 18 meters or 18 foot or something like that okay it's probably 18 meters or something right there we have it we have the true height by working backwards okay it will still we still use the height line we're going parallel to one of the uh, vanishing points where his pitch band projected down only given the height we just vanished it or sorry we vanished it through the vanishing point okay to work out our height okay so a little bit tricky there uh, on that last one guys and the perspective was fine but just understanding that bit for the extra few marks out who will get in that question um, not too tricky but just your understanding behind it uh, so once again guys that is 2019 section A questions completed there for the leaving cert higher level okay